Hello Cabbage Patch Kids, it's Carla, and I am here again in my kitchen today for a really fun recipe. Today I am taking the beloved Roman classic pasta dish, cacio e pepe, and applying it to our humble friend, the cabbage, to make cacio e pepe cabbage chips. This recipe has four ingredients if you don't count the salt and pepper. I'm gonna take these cabbage leaves, slowly bake them, drive off all the moisture. They turn into these crystallized, brown, crunchy little chips, and then top them with salty parm and pecorino, pepper, olive oil. They're addictive, they're delicious, they're vegetarian. They're the thing that you are making at your next party. I promise. Before I prepare the pepe, I am gonna talk a little bit about AG1. I have been watching my husband drink his AG every single morning for at least the past year. He is totally the reason why I wanted to start. The thing about Athletic Greens is that it is super, super simple and it's very easy to make part of the routine. So now in the morning, I put my kettle of water on for my tea. I get my amount of water, one scoop, do the shaky shaky. I'm gonna take a sip. I actually think it's really delicious, very palatable. Mm. It's got tons of vitamins and minerals. It's got antioxidants and adaptogens. It's supporting gut health. I think my energy is more like stable and easy breezy throughout the day. And most of all, it's just been really easy to keep going with it. I'm not gonna to forget to drink my tea. So now I'm definitely not gonna to forget to drink my Athletic Greens. Click the link in the description to check it out. You'll get a year's worth of vitamin D3 K2 plus five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Thank you to Athletic Greens and uh, I've got some cabbage to make. So this is a brand new recipe. It has never been published before. It is especially new for you. And if you appreciate the effort, like and subscribe for me, please leave a comment. Let me know, just say cabbage. Put cabbage in the comments. Let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens. I wrote this recipe to use half of a cabbage because that's about how many cabbage leaves will fit on one rimmed baking sheet. You could absolutely double it if you just wanna use the entire head of cabbage. It's really up to you. So you're looking for like a medium size, not huge cabbage. And I removed the kind of outer, tougher, darker green leaves. And it's kind of amazing. If you've ever sauteed spinach, you are familiar with this. What looks like a huge pile of greens can cook down to be something quite tiny. So even these larger outer leaves of the cabbage, when they're baked, they're gonna shrivel up and lose a lot of their size. They're gonna become like perfect little size chips. So just transferring them. Some cabbages are going to have just a more like open leaf structure, a little less compact. Um, but if you remove the core, it should be easy enough to just pull these leaves off. Cabbage, like all the other cruciferous, is, you know, got kind of a sharp cabbagey nose when it's raw. Um, but when it, they're cooked, and especially when they get some browning on them and some caramelization, they're just so like sweet and almost candy-like and delicious. So that's why pairing them with these salty flavors um, is such a good match. So as you go along, the inner leaves obviously are smaller than the outer leaves. Um, I have a little trick for making sure that they cook at the same rate once they go into the oven. Stay tuned, it's gonna be amazing. So when you get down to it, you should have a sheet tray that looks about like this. If you're using a smaller sheet tray, separate them onto two. Oven at 325. I've got three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And even though garlic is not traditional or classic in a normal cacio e pepe for pasta, um, I do feel like it adds another dimension to this dish. So I'm gonna grate the garlic and then mix it with the oil, just combining them, stirring them together, and that way you won't get like clumps of raw garlic here and there, it'll be very even. You can take the garlic oil and drizzle that everywhere. And then just use your hands, it's really the easiest way to do it. And toss these around, turning them to coat them all over with the oil. This, honestly, I would eat like this raw as a salad. <laughs> so now that everything is coated in oil, the seasonings are gonna stick to it. You know how radio announcers always apologize when they have a cold and their voice is off? I feel like I need to apologize to you guys. I'm a little throaty today. I'm super husky. 
<laughs> I'm your husky cabbage host. <laughs> Right, freshly cracked black pepper. So the pepe and cacio e pepe is pepper. So maybe use a touch more than you would normally if you were just seasoning with salt and pepper. Um, Cause this is like a integral, you know, it's in the title. It's an important part of the dish. Those guys are coated. Go back in with the salt. Yeah, total accident that I chose this sweater for this recipe. <laughs> Wasn't thinking about it at all. Okay, now that everybody is tossed in season, let's talk about uh, sheet pan anatomy. So you may have um, experienced this roasting vegetables when you lay out all your roasted vegetables on a sheet tray, pop them in an oven that's at a steady temperature, and always your roasted vegetables that are on the perimeter of the pan get darker, or maybe those guys burnt and the inside guys are still underdone. That's why we're tossing halfway through. That's because the heat, there's no insulation, right, on the edge. So the edge of this sheet pan is like the outer ring underneath a pan. It's just gonna get hotter the closer you are to the edge. Heat's also radiating off the inside lip of the sheet pan and like throwing heat next to whatever is right there. The guys in the middle, they're insulated. They have all this veg around them. It's like their, their padding that is kind of preventing all of that heat from hitting them directly. So the reason I am talking about this is because the smaller, thinner cabbage leaves are gonna cook faster naturally because they're smaller and they're thinner. So you wanna put those guys in the middle to kind of equalize the cooking rate. So without being like psychotic about it because we're gonna toss while we're in there anyway and we can readjust. So that's it. Little guys in the middle, big guys on the edge and time to pop these in the oven. Total cooking time on the cabbage is going to vary a little bit but somewhere between 60 and 70 minutes. Every 10 minutes, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna turn things around and make sure that everybody's even, flip them, put them back in, hit it for 10 more minutes and check again until you're at about an hour. Don't be surprised if the first couple times you check, not much is happening. These are just starting to release their moisture. They're looking a little bit lighter green. There's some pools of liquid collecting underneath. So all you're doing here is just kind of separating them, taking a look at them, maybe turn them over. You know, you want to just encourage the liquid that's beating up on the tray to evaporate. Everybody has their own little apartment now. So that's what this first phase is all about. That's why this low oven is our friend. This is exactly what you want to see towards the end. These guys that are very dark are starting to crisp up. I'm just gonna take some of the crispy boys off. We want this crispiness, but I don't wanna burn them. So at this point, I want these last guys to crisp up. I'm gonna move them out towards the edge. Are we getting that crackly energy? Delicious chip. It's only gonna get better. It's time to take them out. Okay. These are now all at the same stage where I want them, where we're at chippiness. All right, everybody's coming back. At this point, it really doesn't matter who's where because the last little cook time is gonna go really fast. I don't want them to be overlapping. I just want them all in a single layer so that everybody um, gets hit with the same cheese shower. You've heard of a meteor shower? It's like that, but cheese. It's better. So I'm using a mix of Parmesan and Pecorino. If you wanted to make this dairy free, you would take it more in like the kale chip energy and douse this with nutritional yeast, maybe some mushroom powder, maybe um, a pinch of sugar. And if you use MSG, put a little MSG on it instead. But I'm going to stick with the classic cheese mixture and I just wanna like evenly, but not in a clumpy way, coat everybody with cheese. And any cheese that lands on the baking sheet will also get used, so don't worry about like having to only hit the chip. You can just sort of move your hand around, 
It's gonna hit the chip, it's gonna hit the surface, it's all gonna end up on the party platter. But yeah, even talking about cheesy, salty, peppery flavors, like activates all of those salivary glands. Means we're hungry. For hundo, let's do it. Yep, I'm seeing browning, I'm seeing bubbling, I'm seeing crisping. They're just so cool looking. They get like a tiny polka dot energy. All the cheese that's on the surface has browned and thinned out. It smells like delicious cheesy pasta, but it's cabbage. <laughs> Last thing before they go to the serving plate, just a touch more pepper while everything is warm. We'll just kind of like waken up all of those aromas and it smells really good. And then however you wanna get them off of the tray now that they're cooled, but I just want you to like get a load of how kind of thin and sheeted out and crispy they are. The way that I like to serve them is in like a big tower, taking all the chips and turning them into this like craggy cheese mountain that you would like love to hike and find all of the, you know, different routes and ravines. And then I also just like the way that a tower that's perched like this kind of encourages you to like go in very daintily and pull them off like you're playing cabbage chip Jenga. There's just like a delicateness about them. Don't snooze on what's left on the platter. This is like your crunchy cheese confetti. It's like salt, but better because it's cheese. Welcome to Mount Pepe, where craggy, crackly, cabbage, cheesy dreams are made. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever made, and the payoff is real. Mmm. Plus, it's a vegetable. Mmm. <laughs> this is one of the party appetizers that you get to shower, do your hair, do your makeup, then make your party appetizer, and like, you're cool as a cucumber and ready to go. Cauchy pepe cabbage chips. The nighttime belongs to you.